Hello, my name is Adrian Ficcioni and both Dr Barbero and I would like to thank the European College of Sports Science for the opportunity to joint present our topic, Performance Analysis and Technology in Team Sports at this Coaching and Performance Conference. Now this sort of technology by itself is not much use unless you've actually got some decent software. And uh, this particular technology uh, has uh, two key software packages, one real time, which allows the coach to view either group summaries or quite specific individual data from any player in a real-time environment, but also uh, has the availability of being able to download the data post-event uh, for really advanced analysis, reporting and exporting. And so again, we have a number of clubs that, that review the data real-time while the game is taking place or the training is taking place, but then at the end of the session, they download the data, they report and they export it to each player so that players can have access to their own outputs so they can actually look and see how they are actually performing over time. So what are some of the key benefits of, of the use of GPS beyond what we've already said? I mean really the key technology is technology is that it can now supply the coach with all of this information that is firstly objective, it's real time and it can be available as either group summary or drilled down to a single player. There are now many clubs that base their entire training programs on the information that comes out of their GPS systems. Many of these clubs actually don't measure a training session by time anymore. It is now measured by volume. So once a player has achieved X volume or Y intensity, that is the end of the session. No more is a session 90 minutes. It's really as long as required to stress the athlete to the level it's needed to get the adaptation that is required. Now this is really a quite a major change in the mindset uh, of, of coaches and particular sports we're dealing with. But the results so far show that players now spend much less time on the training paddock and are spending more time completing other elements that help to reduce injury and improve overall physical performance. The use of GPS really allows the coach to gain greater insight into other aspects of the session. The demands of the warm-up, the intensity of certain skill sessions, really allowing for more specific game-based training to be applied uh, you know, between games during the training sessions. We have several clients who have divided each skill session done throughout a season into light, medium and heavy skill components. And so for example, during, um, during a heavy week of training, they only use the heavy drills or the drills that they know actually have high loading on the athletes. And the same, that only light drills are used when in a light week of training. This again further advances the use of uh, periodization to maximize performance of each individual athlete. The SPY Pro has a built-in triaxis accelerometer allowing for the measurement of accelerations, decelerations, impacts, and as I mentioned uh, previously, g-forces when running into each other, body loads, so that can be time spent in certain g-force zones, and really the overall measurement of musculoskeletal stress. Now this, this is an area that I think yeah, in combination with GPS and heart rate really adds huge value to the overall measurement of the loading placed upon the athlete. Typically we say that uh, the GPS is really measuring neuromuscular stress, so that's time spent in different speed zones. The heart rate measures the cardiovascular stress and the accelerometer is capable of measuring the musculoskeletal stress of an athlete. And it's really looking at these three key areas that ensures the maximum development and the minimal overtraining of a particular athlete. Now an interesting application of accelerometry uh, that we've seen is in the sport of football, if you, if you look at a goalkeeper and you find that generally speaking the heart rate is quite low, the distances covered are quite low and the speeds attained are also quite low. Now from that perspective you might think that a uh, goalkeeper actually doesn't do too much work. But if you then actually look at say body load scores, you see that these scores actually go through the roof and are much higher than just about any other player. So the constant jumping, diving and very short rapid accelerations and decelerations are actually probably the highest in, the t in most of these teams. So their stress is musculoskeletal in nature. And again, very important to be able to get quite position specific information that then allows you to develop those athletes to the maximum of their requirements of their position. Uh, the Spy Pro, this particular device also captures heart rate. Now, this really is great for allowing the correlation of cardiovascular output with the speed and intensity readings of the GPS and accelerometer. A key variable used by many clubs is the intensity measured uh, in meters per minute compared to the current heart rate. 
So for example, if the meters per minute is low and the heart rate is high, this immediately tells you that the athlete is cooked or is uh, in a quite a stressed state. So again, those variables by themselves don't give the full picture, but in combination, allow for extremely powerful information that can allow you to make pretty well immediate decisions on what that athlete should be doing from that point onwards. We strongly believe that heart rate alone doesn't give enough information on how the athlete is performing. It tells you what's going on inside, but it can't tell you if the athlete's moving fast enough, covering enough ground, is in the right position. It also doesn't allow you to position profile for future players. Also, there are several external factors that can affect a player's heart rate, such as anxiety and sleep quality. But combined with the other variables, as mentioned earlier, um, really improves the total value of these variables several fold. Now, if you're lucky enough to be able to wear a tracking device of some sort in a game, then that data will be invaluable. It can then allow for the development of game-specific drills and skills that you can then be sure are completed at the intensity required. Also, you can ensure that the most appropriate movement patterns are, development, are developed for each player to maximise their position-specific requirements. Now, the likes of ProZone and Amisco are offering a part of this service because they will give you position and some basic speed and distance information. But if you can then get access to heart rate and acceleration and deceleration and impact and body load data at the same time, that then really brings uh, this to a whole new level of, of development and intensity, which is really what is required to continue to have athletes adapt and improve their performance. Now from current clients, these are, these are really the key training variables that are currently being used in uh, most of the team sports that we're actually dealing with. So the first one is the meters covered per minute. So this is really just a, a, a raw measure of intensity. Uh, some use meters per minute, some use three minutes, uh, uh, meters covered in every three minutes or meters covered in every five minutes. And just having some variability in that is really so that it can be actually customized to the need of the particular coach at the time. The number of impacts. Now, now if you're in a contact sport specifically, then this gives you insight into how much musculoskeletal damage is being done per session or per game. Body load scores. Now again, this is an indication of total musculoskeletal loading placed upon an athlete during a session or a game. The better and more an athlete accelerates and decelerates, the greater the body load score will be. Distance in speed zones. Now the focus is, is getting more quality from players, which is reflected in more time spent in higher speed zones. And then five, the percentage of maximum speeds. The greater the percentage of maximum speed a player can maintain, the more effective they are going to be. Now this, tech, this, this technology, this GPS heart rate accelerometry technology, removes the subjectiveness of training. For example, a recent trial was conducted that had two players completing the same session. At the end of the session, one player had run three kilometres more than the other. Now multiply this out over, say, five sessions a week, and you have one player that's potentially running up to 15 kilometres per week more than the other. Now this either results in one player overtraining or the other player undertraining. And you really can't afford to have this level of subjectiveness in training if you want to maximise each individual athlete's performance and get the most from the team. So in summary, the use of these latest technologies will allow for the coach to really get their hands on more objective performance data. This in turn will allow for more specific player preparation, give the ability to further individualise training for each player, and ensure that there are adequate recovery processes for each player to ensure there is minimal chance of overtraining and resultant injury. Well, thank you very much for your time. I hope this session has been enlightening and I'm sure Dr. Barbero would be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thanks again. Bye.